Hey YouTubers, how are you all doing? I hope this video finds you well. If you're new here, my name is JC and this is the Cuban Redneck DIY channel where we do cooking and grilling videos on Tuesdays and DIY stuff for all types on Fridays. Every once in a blue moon we'll throw a Monday rant but those are far in between. Today is a special day because we are going to introduce a newest member of the family, that being this 2022 Ford Maverick. This is going to be a private truck for the channel. We intend to have a dedicated playlist for everything that we do on this truck in the near future. If you're not into Ford or working on your car, please do me a favor. Click on the title of the channel where you will find dedicated playlists to every topic that we cover. As previously said, one thing you're not going to find on this channel is misleading titles and or thumbnails. So I have an extensive background in building race engines for cars, motorcycles, and even boats. In the late 80s, early 90s, I experimented a lot with positive crankcase ventilation from all kinds of different vehicles. Uh, that was like my go-to thing to make easy, free power. Uh, my friend George, uh, I started racing, has multiple rules written in the NHRA rulebook uh, to address the things that we were doing. Uh, we figured out a dyno by almost by accident that uh, creating a vacuum in the crankcase uh, will you know, yielding an extra eight to 12 horsepower, depending on how much vacuum. Uh, with that said, uh, I had a little bit of a reservation putting this video out with this type of information because I don't feel like getting into a pissing contest with top the world. But if you give me two minutes of your time, I would like to make a case why this is the best way to do a oil separating cash can. I'm going to take a wild guess and say that some viewers may wonder why do I need an oil cash can? Well, all engines experience some type of blow by. That is because piston rings are only 98 to 99% efficient in containing the gases created in the chamber during the power stroke. To improve MPGs by reducing friction, many high RPM capable modern engines use thinner piston rings that allow more blow by, especially in forced induction engines. The objective of the cash can is to capture oil and water particles in the fumes found in the crankcase, especially if we're talking about a DI or direct injected engine. In an engine with poor injection, gas is sprayed in front of the valve. This allows detergents in the gasoline to clean the valves as you drive. On the other hand, a direct injected engine does not see any fuel in front of the valve. This method requires a lot less gas to achieve the same power level, but as they say, nothing comes for free. The absence of gasoline in front of the valve combined with the intake of crankcase fumes that are charged with oil particles is known for causing excessive carbon buildup on the backside of the intake valve in as little as 20,000 miles. There are some short-term cleaning procedures to address this, but they are all short-lived. Eventually, you will need a valve job, somewhere between the 80 to 100,000 mile range. Adding an external oil separator or cash can is one of the only long-term solutions to this problem. Before we proceed, I want to address potential comments from flat earthers as it pertains to making power from positive crankcase ventilation. Please note that this is a well-known, well-documented scientific fact, so please do your homework before commenting and making a fool yourself. For example, in this particular article, using an external mechanical vacuum pump, the power gains were almost 10 pounds of torque and 12 horsepower across the entire power band. Okay, so let's talk about the Ford Maverick. When it comes to the four-cylinder boost, there are two camps. These are predefined by manufacturer of aftermarket oil cash can kits. One can believes that adding an oil separator between the PCV valve and the manifold vacuum port is all you need to worry about. I will admit that this is the preferred method when it comes to racing engines and making north of 400 horsepower. However, in all of these racing applications, they are replacing the OEM oil separator on the side of the block with an aftermarket unit that has a substantially larger baffle, not to mention larger turbos capable of more vacuum. On the other side of the aisle, there are those that are going the cheesy way by just adding an oil cash can to the valve cover or what is commonly known as the clean side. Before you write off this method, be aware that real life tests show that a substantial amount of slush is being collected from the valve cover clean side. That is because inside the engine block, it is all one common chamber. In my opinion, 
both the top and the bottom need addressing. For this reason, I decided to combine them using a T to extract as much crankcase fumes as possible. Although this installation is going to vary from those that you have seen on YouTube, it is still quite affordable. I spent about $60, but I do have a bunch of extra parts that I want to discuss. Uh, first, we have three sets of hoses here. We've got a 3 8 clear hose for the drain. We have uh, six feet of few holes for the uh, manifold side of the vacuum. And we have 5 8 uh, what is referred to as water heater holes for the uh, clean side. Uh, in order to tee off the clean side onto the bottom of the crankcase, I have this tee which I got from Lowe's. It is 3 8 on the T size and 5 8 on the other two sides. I also ordered some 5 8 quick disconnect. This is the four type. Uh, basically to replace the holes or the tubing on the clear uh, on the clean side on top of the valve cover. Now a lot of people have uh, successfully removed this by using a pick and making these clips, uh, pushing in these clips. Uh, it took me about 15 minutes to do the valve cover side. Uh, I wasn't able to get the one on the uh, intake off. Uh, because the uh, the way that the, the clip is on the bottom, you really can't get uh, can't get the pick in there. Now I very much doubt that a mechanic at the dealer is going to fuss with 15-20 minutes for this. And after seeing how much it costs to replace, I strongly believe that this is a throwaway part. Uh, Ford has done this in the past. Uh, for example, the PVC side tubing, which is thinner than this, probably about the same length if we stretch it out costs almost $30, but this one costs less than 10. Not only that, but in occurring auto parts stores, you can find uh, the replacement insert for a lot of disconnects, uh, a lot of quick disconnects. Uh, and I would not be surprised if in the near future, we start seeing replacements for these. However, uh, these are not available at the point that I did this video. Uh, they're not available as a replacement part, just as an entire tool, which I paid $850 for this. Uh, these are extra. These are not the ones in the vehicle. I did uh, wanted to have spare just in the event there's anything wrong with the vehicle, uh, as we're still in the warranty. Uh, I can just plug these guys up and take it back to the dealer. With that said, um, a lot of people are going to have an issue with my, uh, with my cash can oil separator. And that is because this is a $15 unit from Amazon. Uh, it has been my experience that the only difference between a $15 one and a $150 one has been the pre-made hoses, which I don't need because I would be making a custom installation. Uh, this one is baffle. I will be adding some, uh, what you call it, some aluminum uh, wiring there. Uh, when the wire, what it does is when vapor hits, touches the wire, it condenses quicker. Uh, it has a filter. Uh, please make sure that it has a drain valve. Um, it comes with 3 8 uh, connectors. I did buy a 5 8 and that is so it matches the holes on the top of the valve cover. And uh, other than that, this is pretty much it. Oh, uh, I did, uh, oh, I had some PT uh, braided uh, hose protector and I'll be using that on the hose that goes on the bottom. So without further ado, let's get started with the installation. I said I was not going to do a lot of things you have seen others do on YouTube. And one thing I would not be doing is taking half this engine apart in order to remove the PCV hose. All you need to do is remove the collator intake tube located on top of the radiator. We do this by removing the two clips, one on each side, and pulling up firmly. We then need to lay a tower or rag over the fan. That is because it identifies as a feline. And trust me when I say it will shred your forearm. Okay, so here's the tube that we need to remove. And um, what you need to do is push this lever up and it will release. Uh, same thing for the other one. Uh, sometimes you have to push, if they've been pulled, uh, sometimes you have to push a little bit uh, for him to come off. Now, uh, I suggest you remove the one on the throttle body side first. Uh, it might be twisted up this way. So what you need to do is you need to twist the tube up a little bit. So this thing is exposed. And what you're going to do is you're going to slip your hand this way, remove this one, and then pull it down. Once you have this one off, you're going to twist the pipe down and that will give you access to that one. You're going to push up and pull out. 
Here's a closer look of what I'm talking about from the bottom. With that done, we can now move to the top. I removed the air tube side by pulling firmly towards me. And although I had once already removed the valve cover side using a pick, I simply just pulled up on it and broke the clip. We can then go to the bench and start building our hoses. To remove the quick disconnect from the original PCV tube, we need to cut the heat shrink over the ends. After doing so, it comes apart relatively easy. Now I want you to take a look at this. Check out how much oil is in this tube already. Please note that this truck only has 200 miles on the odometer. With both ends removed, we now need a little bit of loop to get the quick disconnect into the aftermarket hose. I'm not sure if my hose was a little bit on the size, but this took quite a bit of effort. With one side in place, we can now slip on the BET cover. I put a little piece of painter's tape on one side. This allows the heat shrink to slip on very easily. I apply a little bit of heat and proceed on to the other end. After both the PCV and the manifold sides are done, I went to work on the top holes. I like the bradles for a reason and also know that I'm not using clamps. These are 120 pound heavy duty zip ties and trust me when I say they grip. However, you need to use the zip tie tool if you want these things to be tight. As far as mounting is concerned, I think that the lip holding the fender cover in place will work just fine. After marking and drilling it, I apply some rose inhibitor, touched up the raw metal with some rust oleum. FYI, I do have some mashing for white, but it is still not here. We can then proceed to mounting the cash can, but apparently I was taking too long because my autofocus decided to take a power nap. It does this every once in a while when it's a little bit too hot, and trust me when I say it is hot out here. After hooking up the top holes to complete the circuit, and after two more zip ties, we are ready for a test drive. Alright guys, so I've been running the system for a few days and I've been monitoring like a hawk. Um, I have a few things to report. Uh, as expected, uh, the vacuum on the manifold side, on the bottom side by the PVC valve, uh, which is, I don't know, 150, 200 times more than the one on the valve cover generated by the inlet tube, uh, it started to be an issue. Um, when you drive the vehicle 20, 30 miles, uh, I found that this tube is starting to get flat, collapsing. Uh, one of the easiest way to get around that is to get, uh, you know, racing holes, uh, aircraft type holes like Russell, something like that. And uh, the issue with that, that's going to set us back about 50 bucks. Uh, plus we need all the end connectors, which are not cheap. And that's got to go away or against what we're trying to do this. And, and that was to do it, to do this, uh, to be get the best performance for the least amount of money. So... Uh, aside from that, when the vehicle is cold, it uh, also has a little bit of extra uh, injector rattling uh, going on. It goes away after four or five minutes. Uh, that is something that I experienced in the past. In 19, early 90s, I was stupid enough to put a 1.8 Integra engine into a Honda CRX. Uh, a lot of fun to drive, but a lot of problems. Uh, that particular motor, which is a B18C, did not like a lot of vacuum on the valve cover. Um, something about the VTEC, the way it was uh, designed, it's basically the oil pump took all the oil and pumped it up to the valve train on the, on the head, and then it had drip holes to, you know, for all the rest of the components. Uh, when you created a lot of vacuum, it held that oil up there and then you get a lot of shattering, a lot of noise until the, engine, until the oil gets thinner. 
I think it's the same issue we have in here, but that's not a problem. Uh, instead of spending $60, $70 on a new hose, what I'm going to do is I'm going to order another $15 canister, uh, cash can, and that way we'll, you know, we'll kill two birds with one stone. We'll satisfy those that say that this has to be on the bottom, on the high pressure side, and those who are doing it, or manufacturers who are selling a kit for the valve cover side. Uh, at the end of the day, we're going to be separating the oil uh, and not allowing that stuff to get into our engine, and that is the ultimate goal. Uh, you also may get a little bit more uh, drivability from the smaller cans because uh, it's already collected. I just drained it. It was about a, about a teaspoon or so and, and nothing. I don't know what this thing it was, but it's been about three or four days. So I expect these guys to get full quite often and uh, I haven't still haven't uh, run the drain uh, hose and uh, we guess we're going to address that when the parts get here. I have ordered an extra one from Amazon and uh, today is Sunday. I expect it to be here on Tuesday, at which time we're going to pick this video back up. Before we proceed, let's address the naysayers and the trolls by stating that there was no dual cash can oil separator kits for the 2022 Ford Maverick when this video was recorded. However, there are many applications where this is desired. For example, many Toyotas and even the 3.5 EcoBoost F-150. As far as installing two oil cash cans on the Maverick, all we need is a small piece of flat stock to bridge the distance between the original mounting location and the 10 mm bolt holding the neck of the windshield washing fluid bottle. Ideally, this piece needs to be about 11 inches long by 2 inches wide, but all I had on hand was a piece measuring 8 inches and it's going to have to do, which means I'm going to have to figure out how to make up the difference or come back at a later date and rebuild the bracket. Along with the extra canister, I ordered some stainless steel wool as a condensation media as well as some 45 degree fittings to release the stress from the angle of the hoses. After pre-fitting one of the canisters to the bracket, everything bolted right up as planned. But it is evidence that a second anchor point is needed. I found a small piece of one by one angle and I was hoping it would do the trick, and it did. Without question, I had to come back and reveal this bracket. I may even get it anodized in blue or painted white, so make sure to check out my blog where I'll be posting any updates. With the bracket in place, I dry fitted the new hoses, then brought him back to the bench where I added braided covers and heat shrink to the ends before the final installation. Well, I have to say that the road to this point was not pretty and definitely full of potholes, but I think that we accomplished our goal, and without a doubt, two oil cash cans on the Ford Myricks are better than one. Please visit the blog for part numbers and links to all the products used in this installation, and I truly thank you for watching.